Lord, in the area of our life where we lack wisdom, bless us with understanding. As we read your words in the Bible, through your Holy Spirit, make us ready in our hearts and minds for the change we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Chapter 7, we will read from verse 37. On the last day, the climax of the holidays, Jesus shouted to the crowds, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. For the scriptures declare that rivers of living water shall flow from the inmost being of anyone who believes in me. He was speaking of the Holy Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet returned to his glory in heaven. When the crowds heard him say this, some of them declared, This man surely is the prophet who will come just before the Messiah. Others said, He is the Messiah. Still others, but... He can't be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. And some wanted him arrested, but no one touched him. The temple police, who had been sent to arrest him, returned to the chief priests and Pharisees. Why didn't you bring him in? They demanded. He says such wonderful things, they mumbled. We have never heard anything like it. So, you also have been led astray? The Pharisees mocked. Is there a single one of us Jewish rulers or Pharisees who believes he is the Messiah? These stupid crowds do, yes, but what do they know about it? A curse upon them anyway. Then Nicodemus spoke up. Remember him? He was the Jewish leader who came secretly to interview Jesus. Is it legal to convict a man before he is even tried? He asked. They replied, Are you a wretched Galilean too? Search the scriptures and see for yourself. No prophets will come from Galilee. Then the meeting broke up and everybody went home. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Verse 37. How often you feel hunger and thirst for comfort, for assurance that everything is going to be all right. And then you go places, you call people where after you, you, you left, you feel the same hunger and thirst. For a while, you know, for the, the, the time of the conversation you had at those places or with those people, you felt some, some calmness, but never really, never really the comfort you needed. Never forget that God made us to have with Him an intimate relationship. So wherever we go, our deepest desire for love, for comfort, will never be satisfied, only through God. And Jesus says, He states here, but the only satisfaction for our spiritual thirst can be found only in Him. It is really silly, but I remember 
when I was young and I was thirsty under the, the hot sun. I wanted to drink Coca-Cola and I was drinking it, drinking it. Actually, I don't like Coca-Cola, but I was drinking it and uh, it didn't matter how much, you know, bottle of cola I was drinking. I stayed thirsty. Only water could satisfy my thirst. It is really a silly, a stupid example, but doesn't matter how sugary, you know, how promising uh, someone's words, speech look like or sound. It will not give us, it will not give you the comfort, the satisfaction for the thirst you have because you basically want God to satisfy your thirst. Have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.